What is going on? This video is sponsored by RexMD. Go down there and just listen to any fish maybe popping. Oh, it is patio weather, you're right. Oh my goodness, this is so nice. I have a hoodie on, it's September. God bless you, sir. Mm -hmm. Is this a potato water? Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome on back to the channel, everybody. This is tournament number two in our series. Thank you guys so much for watching uh, our last tournament, all those videos. Uh, hopefully you loved it. And we're just gonna build on that. We're on our second stop of the team tournament here on Lake Palestine. And this happens to be uh, one of Matt's favorite lakes to fish in Texas, I believe. It is. And you've caught your personal best out of here, maybe? Right down there. Off oh, is it right here? Seriously? Off the bank. Off the dock down here? I was on the bank. On the, the bank? Yeah, so you'll see it later, but the, there's the the boathouse right there, and then there was nothing next to it. There was old boathouse pilings, and I was dragging a Carolina rig through them from the bank, just like messing around. <laughs> Got a nine and a half pounder. <laughs> nine and a half pounder PB. Yeah. So there's, there's some hogs that are living in here. We're in the fall transition time right now. First big cold front has come in. The lows are in the 50s right now, so that's why we're in hoodies. It's gonna feel so good in the morning to finally get out there after this long, hot summer and feel that cool breeze, you know, flip-flops, sweatshirts, and hopefully we're gonna see some fish busting. This is normally when top water comes into play, but this lake is known for having stumps, trees, things that can poke through your boat, ruin your day, and it's also got a southern end with a lot of deep water. So it's gonna be interesting, but it's gonna fish a lot smaller than Lake Texoma did, because that was a huge body of water, but I think it's gonna be fishing better. So here's to some top water, brown water, good times. If you're wanting to go north, so follow that track and it starts getting really sketch right here because this is like super shallow. Uh -huh. Like you really, you cannot run that. You will, you will, you will need your push pull at that point. And, mm -hmm. Okay. But you got to come in here and slide through here. So. You better stay north of these and south of those, and then miss the death traps. Mm. So, yeah, there's some right next to that track right there. Right? There's a lot of danger in there. Yeah. So that's why you got to make the decision. Do you go? Day one of practice, the truck thermometer is saying it is 50 degrees. I did not expect it to get that low. I thought it was gonna be just in the 50s, but we're almost in the 40s right now. So uh, that's cold, y'all. That's cold, we got the hoodies on. Um, we are going to go up to a place that we gotta mark off the list uh, on, the, on the map. It's up in a, some like shallow creek areas full of stumps. And we're hoping that there's gonna be some bass that are gonna be moving around with this cold front. Um, that shallower water is going to cool off a lot faster than the main lake deep water and it might just get them into that fall feeding spirit busting shad so we're going to go up there we're going to look see how many boats are running uh, up in that area and uh, see if the shad activity is good and then we're going to probably fish uh, either this afternoon or tomorrow on the southern end and really explore some new stuff but it's going to it's all about eliminating water and practice Today is going to be a stumpy ride, so put your seatbelts on.
my partner here. This way. His uh, his arsenal is quite impressive. <laughs> you know, it's it's not like, uh, yeah, man, bring your best five. It's bring your best eighteen. That's eighteen. He's got more at the house that we're <laughs> staying at. So um, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're not gonna run out of rocks. There's stumps everywhere, y'all. We're in two and a half foot of water. It's just this giant flat, and we're trying to find uh, the creek channel to go up in and get in some deeper water to fish. But it's just treacherous out here. I hope that didn't take too much gel coat off the bottom. Nah, fine. That felt so. When he's very talking hard. about these places to run, he literally means like you got to be on it. Like we're Dude, just inside of those. What did we just run over? A tree. That felt harder than a tree. Yeah, might have been a submerged piece of this road. <laughs> yeah, it's it a submerged concrete. piece of this road. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. I don't even want to know what the bottom of that boat looks like right now. It says cross here. Matt gave us a mark on the map. I guess it's just high enough to get over. Imagine doing this at 40 miles an hour. The thing is, is some psychos run this. You know, like, that's, <laughs> there are people that would come in here on full pad. Oh yeah. And uh, I just, Ricky I don't have that. I don't have that gene. If I'm a survivalist. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that mad at him. I want to catch him, but I'm not that deathly mad at him. Okay, we crossed the road with no injuries. Um, now we gotta go under this bridge. of the trip. Got him on a zinger. Um, Little keeper bud. Mm -hmm. I think that was our biggest one on Texoma in yep, practice. Pretty much. <laughs> right there. Uh, smell you. Light. I noticed on the live scope there were some stumps that are under the water that I couldn't see and then I bumped into one with the spinner bait and then that's when one hit it. So completely off the bank. But I, I think with it still being you know, it was like 100 degrees a few days ago. These fish aren't going to be fully committed to going up super shallow yet. They're going to probably stay close to the creek channel. Whew. I'm excited to catch one. Got a little chilly, chilliness. My toes are numb. Gonna be the key. Hello. Oh my gosh, look at this stump, dude. Oh. Look at look at these things. Punisher. <laughs> these are absolute punishers, man. We may not make it out of here with a trolling motor. Uh oh. Could be a problem. We broke our trolling motor. Already. Already. All right. Well, we uh, we have broken the trolling motor prop, which is a problem. An hour in to four days. Hour in to four days. Um, these stumps out here are gnarly. 
And I wasn't even going that fast. No. Just creeped up on one, hit it, busted it. So that is not going to do. Um, I have a spare in the boat, but I'm not sure if I have. We might could use some Guggen pliers to get her done. Got it replaced. A little five minute repair. You know, I usually keep uh, keep an extra trolling motor prop and an extra motor prop, big motor prop, when I'm fishing tournaments. I forgot the big motor prop, at least I had this one, but we just started, y'all, and there's way more stumps in our future, so I'm a little worried. We're just going to be cautious, kind of ease our way through here. I'm going to say, dude, if we don't get any sizable fish, rule it out. Rule it out, because this is just danger field. Right. Ain't happening up here, folks. Too scary. Too scared we're gonna hit something every five minutes, every five seconds. You can't just like get on the troll motor and fish. Leave this, to the, leave this to the locals. On the way to the lake right now, I'm gonna meet up with uh, my partner, Matt. This is round two. We're yet again competing in another derby. Um, I'm also yet again late to the party. Matt's already gotten started. He's been fishing probably since 6 a.m. Uh, we've got a lot to learn about this lake. New lake, completely different setting. First it was Texoma, absolute wiener grinder. Um, caught fish, but I don't even think we bothered even to weigh in. Um, but yeah, same scenario, just a different different day and a different lake and I'm hoping bigger fish. Got a bit of AM traffic this morning. So as I told you guys, this video was sponsored by RexMD. I want to say thank you to them for sponsoring this Guggen video over here. As you guys do know, I'm the I'm one of the older Guggens, myself, and of course Rackley. Lojo's older than me too, so I know Ro Lojo, he's stacked up on some RexMD. So if you guys do not know what RexMD is, it, it's literally a discreet little package that shows up to your door. It's generic Viagra. Yes, that is right. I know Lojo, you need a little bit of generic Viagra in your life. I got you, buddy. Two dollars a pill. Two dollars a pill for some fun time action. Who wouldn't like that? Literally, all it does, shows up to your door, you pop it open, this sweet little guy is sitting there. Boop. Pull this little package out, pop it open, ah, insert for a fun time action. So what you need to do is go to the top of the description, click on the link at the top of the description, it'll take you to rexmd.com forward slash Guggen. If you guys don't wanna click the link, it'll literally be rexmd.com forward slash Guggen, and this is how it works. You guys click on the Get Started Now page. So this is how it works, you click on the Get Started Now, takes you over there, you fill out a little bit of a questionnaire, and it literally will send it straight to your door. You guys don't want to be paying all oh, those big doll hairs for Viagra. Yeah, $90 for Viagra. Why would you want to do that? You just pay $2 a pill, FDA approved, generic Viagra, showing up right to your door for $2 a tablet. Discreetly to your door. Yes, very discreet. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, they've helped over 100,000 men get it. Yes, that's right, 100,000 men. There's no copay, there are no doctor's office visits, and your shipping is always free. So if you guys would like to be like Lojo, go to rexmd.com forward slash Guggen to snag yourself some of these. Super simple. If your love life is lacking, lackluster, I got you. Lojo's got you. We've got you. The older Googans will teach you the ways. rexnv.com forward slash Googan. There he is. He's coming in hot. Real fishing. I even brought my own rods. Look, I'm coming so prepared this week. I've got rod socks on and everything. I'm a professional. Go crank on. Matt's over here on business calls and decided to get started early. It's my first ever Palestine bass. What was that, like five minutes? He literally just picked me up right there. The truck is, what, 20 yards away from where I just caught this fish? Saw one bus, cast up on the riprap, and got ourselves a nice little East Texas LMB. Thank you. We'll see you uh, Saturday.
Well, we poked our noses out a little bit deeper. And on my first cast dragging this school, we just got a bite, so. Had him on. Had him on, yeah, I mean, he's, he's on. So that's different. Mm -hmm. Would uh, be a quite different plan from what we plan to do. Maybe, yeah, but, maybe just come out here for a little bit, catch one or two, and then go back to the bay. Yeah, but uh, okay. if this ends up being the deal, I got a lot of re-rigging it. <laughs> Got him. Here we go. Big one. Come on, baby. Big one. Big That's one a real too. big one. I only made two casts on that point. Doinked. All right, we need that alone. Yeah. It's a big one. It's my buddy. God, it's my buddy. Big one. Dragon Mondo works. It's a big one. I tried, I, I tried not even. I know. I saw it. It's about to jump. We're not supposed to hook these today. Oh, God. Yeah. Well. I know what we're doing. Alright, well, we got a lot of rigging to do. <laughs> Carolina Riggins is going to work. Oh, but you catch five of those, you're we winning a tournament. Yeah. I want to quickly get that fish back in the water because we slow Came fought it. Deep water. Came out of deep water, swam off just fine. Alright, well. Two bites, Trey had two bites right there. And uh, first one felt good too. First offshore spot. So uh, let's go find 10 more of these. We'll definitely put the marker on this spot and uh, continue on. What's your favorite lake around there? LBJ a couple years ago, but LBJ's gotten really bad. Um, oh, got him. I think it's a large mouth too. And it is. We got a little something going here, bud? Yeah, we do. We got large ones catching them on spoons and big worms. And I mean, ones. it's just down the hatch. It's, it's, you know, it's three pounder. No big deal. Oh, my goodness. Throwing a big flutter spoon like that, let this guy go. Solid three pound fish. I've done that on Lake Fork a lot and some other lakes that they kind of get schooled up around the points in the fall. And you know, they eat big worms, they eat deep diving crankbaits. And I like to throw these when there's a, like a ledge you can work it down. So, what's terrifying though is that we're fishing against deep cones in this deal. Oh, I know. And these fish are out. There's some guys in this tournament that are absolute professionals Professionals when it comes to offshore fishing. Me and Trey like to think we're, you know, kind of savvy, but really these guys, they spend like 300 days a year on the water looking at their graphs and they really know what's going on. So if there's big bass offshore, there's definitely guys in this tournament that probably already know where they are and we're just kind of picking on their spots a little bit. But I'm gonna tell you what, if we can get five fishing, Stuff like this, offshore, throwing the big meat and potatoes at them. Mm, that gets me excited. We ended on a good note today. So we got some solid fish. We started idling around these points and marking fish out here, marking brush. We're just adding spots to a little milk run that we can do. Um, and we got a lot of work to do tomorrow on idling around marking spots. So. I think tomorrow morning, I think we'll like probably zoom down here and see if there's any shad getting busted and then go from there. <coughs> Sneeze, apologize. But now it is time to head back to the house. The boys are already there and we're hungry. So, <coughs> excuse me, let's go eat. Matt is stressing me out right now. He's absolutely wearing me out. His boat's breaking. He's rigging rods. I got four rods. I'm ready to go tomorrow. Plan is to fish deep. We're going to go revisit a lot of the stuff that we had marked previously this morning. And we're going to just work it hard to see if we can get those fish to open up. Work it hard. But Matt has got, he's got, I mean, it's like, come on, dude. What's wrong with you? 
Nothing. I'm ready to go. I, I put some chicken in the oven. It's ready. Let's go chew. Them rods are fine. They ain't going to go nowhere tomorrow. See, look, you're about to break something here, man. You're, you're working too hard. Work smarter, not harder. I'm, I'm trying to win. <laughs> Me too, dude. But the guy who rigs 800 rods the night before doesn't necessarily win. Doesn't mean you're a winner. I don't have a boat that works. Just means you've got fishing OCD. Your boat is fine. You just got two graphs in the front that are a little bit, uh... I mean, look at the situation we're in right now. Ah, that sucks. Wrapping up the night, you know, did a little rigging. Got some stuff rigged up for tomorrow. And, uh, everybody's hungry. Just starting to talk trash to each other. To our own teammates. To our own teams. Um, it's time to just enjoy the festivities. I, I did just notice there's another, um broken parts of the boat today that we missed. <laughs> Each person broke something today. Yep. So you guys wash your graphs. We uh, we broke our live scope mount. I need to tape that on so it stays. And then uh, replace the prop, but the skag is now missing. Off the so it's it's really a bit weird. weird. I noticed it was making a weird sound today. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> and uh, no, no why. Oh, it's missing no. the skag. So, you know. Just another day. Listen. She floats, right? She's a floater. She floats. That's all that matters. As long as you get a boat that floats, you're catching fish. You don't need any of that fancy, dancy, high-tech equipment. Just because Bill Dance told you to get an 18 inch screen does not mean does not mean you need to get an 18 inch screen. Square bill Sun is not up yet, but um, we probably we just kind of make our way down. A little cloud cover, looks like. A little bit, like it'll burn off. But just a light, light wind. Nothing crazy. Should be, should be good for the taco tops. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Day two of official practice. Starting off the morning here. Uh, beautiful morning, by the way. It's in the 60s. Um, it's gonna be another high sunny day, but we're just starting it off on some rock where we were hoping some shad might be gathered. Still looking for those feeding, some pops. Uh, haven't seen anything yet. I think we're gonna spend the first hour of the morning just running around to different pockets and banks and looking for, um, you know, shad pushed up where bass are feeding on them. Try to throw some pop waters and some moving baits. Yesterday afternoon, we found some fish that were offshore, uh, the size fish that you would need to actually win this thing or do very well. And we're not sure how that's going to work out timing wise with the day. Uh, if those fish are going to be there in the morning as well, or if we found those fish in the afternoon and that's, that's the best time to fish for them. Uh, so it's going to be some, some timing, uh, education as well. Just trying to see if those fish are going to be out there early morning or what, but, uh, I think we'll do this for the first hour and then we'll start graphing around and seeing if there's any fish to be caught offshore in the morning hours. So far I have not seen, seen the seen shad by the seashore like I want to see. That's uh, what do they call that? A tongue twister? Mm-hmm. Maybe it was just that low. No. Alright, well, I guess we'll go put the city shot. Good morning, Guggins. We woke up uh, bright and early this morning to deal with last night's damage. Everyone, just about everyone, 
has broken their boat. Even Matt, who knows so much about this lake, we avoided the stumps. We didn't break a trolling motor or a skeg, but what, happen, but what we did break was our two front grass. Um, they just automatically turned off on us. So we, were, we woke up early so that Matt can go into the shop, take his Skeeter to get fixed and worked on. Granite, mind you, today is day number two of practice and tomorrow is derby day. So we're really running down the wire here. So Matt's gonna go in, get his Skeeter checked out. I'm gonna take this other Skeeter. Thankfully there's two Skeeters. This is your father-in-law's and we're gonna rip this around um, in the morning to see if we can at least make up for any time that we lose on the water um, not having Matt's boat. So it is what it is as part of fishing. Expensive things require expensive um, mistakes. So. Even though I don't think we made a mistake, something just happened. I don't know what the deal was. Worst comes to worst life. Just use this boat. Yeah. Yeah. The powerful charge is even saying that it's dead. Boat number two, I think, is down for the count. We got a battery issue on this one. I think it's the I think it's the battery. Well, John, <laughs> guess we're going to the mechanic. Let's go. Oh my lord, that was that was fun. I didn't make a cast. turned into I mean this is just typical you and me on the water oh yeah situation at this point oh, yeah. we've gone through two brand new skeeters and um drawing motor doesn't work on the, on the one that we tried to fish off this morning which in theory should have been completely fine nothing wrong with that boat and then this boat of course doesn't have the two front graphs sure we could definitely fish but it helps to have our graphs and to have a trolling motor because that way we can really pinpoint those fish and find out where they're at. I think a lot of the guys that are going to be catching them this week are going to be catching them deep and they're going to be using their electronics and we don't have electronics. So, here we are. Here you go. No. I had this big square bill vibe and I put a big square bill on, caught one on my second cast, so I don't know what that means, but Thanks. not a keeper, but maybe this little turnover deal has them like not wanting to eat a top water, but might be able to get them on a, a square bill. I don't know. I like that thought. We'll see. I Up under here, though. Yeah. He said it's way. There's they're way up under here. We could have, but I didn't even know that there was. No, no. Yeah. I mean, no one knew there was fuses up there. Wow. Well, of course, there's fuses. We both said it wasn't going to be anything insanely difficult. So, how much did that cost, by the way? Zero dollars. Oh, that's good. Our boy Joe. Joe. Joe Nautical from Nautical Mile. Joe from Nautical Mile hooked it up and. Saved us not only uh, an expensive repair, but also the derby. We now have the boat back. It was just a fuse. Of course it was. Probably a five cent, five, five freaking cent piece that somehow blew on us. Back at it. We still have a lot of time to figure these fish out. 
I'm glad it was nothing serious. It was just a simple little fix. A fuse of all things. You know how many how many trips and and days go almost ruined because of a fuse because you think something else is bad? No. We're fine. We're chilling. fish oh. yep decent decent fish actually good fish really good fish <laughs> oh oh my gosh god dang it why could this happen tomorrow i know oh my oh my god. gosh that's a pig it's like seven eight pounds okay okay nice okay. job that's that's a big one. So it's kind of weird. It's not best. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a beast. Nice job, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Damn, we could have used him tomorrow. We could have definitely used this one. Well, and put him back. Maybe maybe he'll, he'll, he'll stay around. Right, right here. Just me up here. Oh my gosh, dude. All right, let's get out of here. We're not fishing here anymore. <laughs> but hey. I will say, I just said, you know, I so, watched yeah, those, so, guys, those guys that fish deep. I was right. going to say, that you were casting deep and then bring it up shallow. Yes. Just then. That's a big fish. Let's go. Yeah. Let's definitely going to go close to seven. What is it? Like six, right at six. Six, six pounds. Big fish. Wow, those are quite nice. 30 pounds. Oh my gosh, dude. This All right, let's go find another yeah. pile of these. Yeah. Okay, so that was in 10 foot. <sighs> on the way up, I'm sure that's okay on the way up. That one felt, that felt so good after Texoma. We've had yeah. broken boat. <laughs> I haven't seen a fish like that in this boat in God. ages. It's been a bit. Whew. Keep fishing, never stop, John. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That was sweet. That was sweet. <laughs> To catch, we need to catch one fish. We need to catch one fish out of each spot, yeah. just to give us an idea as to when they're biting. What time is this? Ten something. I don't know if it me means anything, but Dude, that one freaking pounded. Yeah, that's good. You're oh. throwing a little bit shower recon as well. Yeah, I'm throwing oh, the yeah. deeper one. Look at that. I think that's the Cosmo shad, the Cosmo named after our good friend Cosmos Q. There you go. Dugansquad.com. Yes, you can catch fish like that too. <laughs> All right, let's have some fun. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Man, I'm have a big in here. Fast. I'm not sure what I've got here, but it's a it's an interesting run. Last. Oh, bar fish, begging. That's what we want right there. That is a spectacular eater. Notice these guys have a smaller mouth. They're yellow on the sides. They have a very sharp gill plate. They'll get you. Oh, I'm on, I'm on a white bass. Oh, let's turn into a. Oh. We are getting some meats. I'd like to get a uh, trio, a white bass crappie and a bogfish fried flat. Mm. Come here, little buddy. This is what we've become. Trey, you're going to go from like excellent dock flipping comments to. You're so good at white bass fishing. <laughs> I think we're gonna call it a practice. Put in a day and a half. Yesterday we found a little something in the afternoon that we liked. We tried to build on that today and it didn't work out. I'm, I'm thinking it's gonna be a timing thing for that afternoon offshore bite. So it may not do us any good in the mornings, but I think we'll try it uh, early in the tournament. Just see if those fish are there and we'll bite. 
then we're just going to put our heads down and go fishing. We saw a lot of people this afternoon just fishing docks and you know, to, to me, you might be able to find like a key brush pile or something like that, but when you're just beating the bank like that, you might be beating up fish that you could fit, catch in the tournament. So um, for us, I think we're just gonna, you know, pay attention to, to the grass, go fish docks, go out to the points. We're just gonna follow the bank, go bank feeding and have probably 20 rods on the front of the boat. But we're gonna go enjoy the fruits of our catching. A little uh, fish tacos, East Texas stop. Time for fish tacos. And by the way, it looks like our partners actually got out on the water. So that's good. That's good to know. I know they were having some troubles this morning. But uh, while they're out working hard, trying to figure out the winning pattern, maybe share a little info with us, we're going to make some fish. Uh, we're gonna make fish tacos. We're in Texas. These are gonna be uh, white bass and yellow bass. What's up, boys? Hey, you're late. Howdy, I know. <laughs> I thought we'd be early. You're honestly. on the same way, like that. Dude, bro. Absolute. It's horrible. Corn cobs out there. It's uh, horrible. Yeah. Oh, may or may not have pulled out a six-pounder. What? Dude, yeah, boy, that's hey all. That's, that's pretty much all we caught. <laughs> to be fair. Huh. And, to be fair, we also got a late start. Offshore. Offshore. On yeah, buddy. On a, on a point type deal. Yeah, anybody want a East Texas finest? Yeah. Fileo fish. Absolutely. Taco. Absolutely. Let's do it, Captain. Captain Rap. A couple fillets. Right in the tortilla. You just have at it. Mmm. Phenomenal. Real deal? Mm hmm. That's actually my favorite cheese. It's so good. good. I feel like it burst on like I always knew it was a thing, but I feel like they're everywhere. Mm. And it's really good. Wow, I'm spilling. That is delicious. That's good. Which uh, which ones did you get? <clears throat> down yep. here we Middle have. Way. Down here is the yellow bass. Oh, I didn't try that one. Not the one up top. The white bass, not bad. There's like a hair gaminess, but really, no. they're never they never disappoint. Oh, they hit me up. Mm. It's a lot about when you get them again. They're the uh of day number one here at Lake Palestine. We got the tournament director on the on the mic, spitting out numbers, we're lining up. Boats are eager and ready. There's definitely gonna be some bigger weights this one. That's a really hard, hard. Oh my god!